Okay, guys. Hello. Good afternoon. Um, it's a Sunday afternoon here, and I just want to record a lecture because di natin alam eh kung kailan tayo next na magkikita. And I just want to say, guys, that I'm thinking about you. I hope that you are well, and um, we're just hoping na mahapasa ko yata sa school that. After all of this, everything will be okay. So, we're still praying and hoping. And actually, I still have to ask Mom Tips if I could submit subjects with um, lectures. However, I just want to record this na, so that I could start recording lots of lectures. Lots of lectures are still left. So, ayoko kayong mahuli, guys. So, can I just discuss this one? Disorders of coagulation. So in this lecture for the next, hopefully less than an hour, is we will discuss about the inherited disorders of coagulation, acquired, so inherited, sabi natin, inborn or congenital. So it's from genetics mostly. Next is acquired. So under that are liver diseases, um, autoimmune, antibodies. Massive transfusion, what else? Um, disorders of fibrinolysis and disorders about thrombosis or excessive clot formation. So, could we start now? Let's go. So, inherited muna tayo. So, here, first off, we have hemophilia. So, hemophilia, so coming from the word hemo, blood, and philia means love, so love of hemorrhage. So, apparently, in this patient class, there is so much bleeding involved and so much bruising. But one of the key um, characteristic or um, manifestation of a person with hemophilia is hemarthrosis hemarthrosis so there is bleeding um in between the joints of the body so as you can see in this image tatabi ko yung mukha ko dito na lang Yan. so here in this image apparently dito sa may in her elbow there is um inflammation and hematoma and bruising involved so it's hemarthrosis i think i can annotate here and use a mouse, pwede ba? So, can you see the mouse? So, in hemophilia, guys, so there is, wait, yeah. In hemophilia, um, it's heredity, um, the way that it's inherited is X-linked recessive. Pwede bang isulat nyo yung x -line? Mom, why is it X-linked? Because your X chromosome, um, your um, factor 8, factor 9, and factor 10, which are involved in hemophilia, are found in the X chromosome. Kaya X link siya, X link recessive. Yan. When there, when we say something is X link recessive, um, female are usually just carriers. Wala silang signs and symptoms, and the men here are the one who carries the symptoms and the disease. Yan. Female are only carriers. They do not exhibit signs and symptoms. Pero, may sinabi si Henry dito that, so, generally, sabi ko nga sa inyo, generally, only females are carriers. However, if the female has Turner syndrome, ang Turner syndrome, mga kapatid, is the female only has one X chromosome. Di ba dapat X? XX ang babae. Dalawa yung chromosome X. So, kay, um, kay Turner Syndrome, she only have one X chromosome. So, she is um, highly predisposed to having um, manifestations as well of hemarthrosis, of bleeding sa hemophilia. What else? Ito, imbalance in the lionization of X chromosome, aside from Turner syndrome. And if you're a daughter of affected male and a carrier female. So, kung yung nanay mo, in her family line, carrier rin siya, at yung tatay mo, may hemophil na na ko, nagkandalo-kaloko na, yung daughter, sure na magkakaroon ng manifestations of hemophilia. So, in hemophilia, we have three. We have 
Um, I deny that I've been removed. So I'll make it short and simple. So we have three. We have three hemophilias. We have A, hemophilia A, B, and C. Wag nyo kahalimutan. So eight, nine, and eleven. Yeah. Sabi ko ba? Then ato sabi ko. Hindi na eleven. So eight, nine, eleven. So the one which can range to mild from from mild to severe, it's hemophilia A or classic hemophilia. Yeah. or royal disease class. So this one's royal disease because it runs in the royal family. Because in the royal family class, but there is consanguinization. And so consanguinity, I think wala itong word na consanguinization. So in consanguinity, or if they um, intermarry between the family members, ayan, pwedeng tayo magkaroon ng hemophilia. So, yeah, royal disease or classic. Yeah, so this is the most common, factor 8. Next is factor B, um, hemophilia B or factor 9 deficiency. So, factor 9 is also called as Christmas factor, so Christmas disease. And the mildest form or the silent form of hemophilia is Rosenthal syndrome or factor 11 deficiency. So, hemophilia A, B, and Z. Again, B are both. Um, X-linked, and C is autosomal recessive. And guys, if you're going to read, I think, nabasa ko sa Rodak, yun, um, factor C, uh, hemophilia C, sorry, is found among Ashkenazi Jews. So these Jews, guys, are also conservative, yun. In their being so conservative that they want to save their family line that they intermarry within the family. So, ayan, nagkakaroon ng hemophilia. So, ayan, there is bleeding and hemarthrosis ang gusto kong i- i- um, emphasize dyan. So, so your um, fact, hemophilia A um, spans from mild to severe. So, depending on the activity of the factor, factor 8 and 9. So, it's the same with factor A and B. Pwede siyang mild to severe. So, severe, spontaneous bleeding into joints, to connective tissues, and soft tissues, gastrointestinal tract, and epistaxis. Ano ba ang epistaxis? Paki-Google naman. Five seconds lang. So, ayun. So, the same with A and B. So, the severity will depend on the activity. Kung ilan ang present activity, I'll show you a slide. Actually, it's in your notes yan. So, bring out your notes, guys. Bring out a drink. Let's relax. Let's learn. Tubig lang yan. So, ayan. Factor zero. Mali lang siya. Silent type. So, these are the treatments. Here in this slide shows the treatment of your hemophilia. So, yun, DD, AVP is one, the Zamino 8 arginine vasopressin. So, it promotes the, so, ang DD, AVP class, sa factor 8 lang siya ha. So, this promotes the production of factor 8 from exogenous sources. Pag sinabi natin exogenous sources, so, from outside sources. Okay. So, aside from DD, AVP, we have to increase the factor A concentrates, so hemophilia P, factor 9 concentrate, and factor C, kahit fresh frozen plasma or whole blood. So our purpose here is, as much as possible, is to decrease the bleeding. So, class, um, one way to know that a person has hemophilia is number one, get the family history. So, you have to know the pedigree, diba, from cytogen, the pedigree between the mother and the father. So, you have to know um, the status of every family member. Okay. So, for laboratory tests, most, I think the most important um, testing is APTT, siyempre. So, it's in the intrinsic pathway. Yeah. So, and if you want to be specific, syempre, so, hemophilia A. So, um, test for factor 8, assay. Yeah. So, guys, we have this one. Early clues for the detection of hemophilia. So, first off, 
treatment. So there is family history, what else? So we will observe the baby. So if there is bleeding after the, after the cutting of umbilical cord, or there is bleeding in the umbilical stump, parang mali ata yung pagka, ano ko dyan, uh, cutting in the umbilical cord, or presence of bleeding in the umbilical stump. So pag sinabi natin stump, um, it's the area where something was cut off or, re or removed. Example, yung puno. Pag pinutul natin yung puno, yung natira, natirang part ng ugat, na, that's which one, which is closest to the soil, that's the stump. So, yun yung residue oh, after cutting. So, here, so, sa baby, we will observe the umbilical stump. If there is bruising and there is bleeding, so that's a, that, that, can, that can be a sign of hemophilia in the baby. So, joint swelling, hemo, hematoma, upon walking, limited the range of motion in the certain joints, refusal to use the limb, bleeding after circumcision. Um, there is apparently, hindi ko kayo, may kuhinto lang ako. So, it's in the Bible that, um, that God said that Abraham should circumcise the Jews, but Israel. So, sabi niya daw, um, sab sabi ni God that circumcised the kid after the eighth day. But right now, diba, if you notice, our circumcision, it could, we can do it after birth. Pero dati, in the ancient times class, ang rationale nun, kaya inutos ng Diyos na after the eighth day daw, isa circumcise ang bata. Because after the eighth day, the vitamin K will spike up. So upon the increase of vitamin K, it will reduce the bleeding of the baby after circumcision. So here, so sabi dito, prolonged bleeding after circumcision. So it can be hemophilia. It can be vitamin K deficiency. Kaya, class, when a baby is born, we, the, to reduce bleeding tendencies, usually doctor gives a vitamin K shot as a prophylaxis. And now, since um, the reason why we can circumcise children immediately after birth, because we can already inject them with vitamin K as a prophylaxis. Yeah, we don't have to wait the eight day. Can I put rationale in it? Hmm. Okay. So yeah, after um, bleeding after tooth extraction for blood extraction and intramuscular injection. So if the kid is basically prone to bleeding, muscle tightness. So this is what I'm talking about. So the levels. Yeah, nito. So nakita niyo ba? Yung mouse. So here, dito sa second column, so the activity of factor 8 and factor 9 will, will um, dictate the severity of your um, hemophilia. So if you're, it would be severe if you have less than 1% activity of factor 8 and factor 9. So wala talaga sa nang ginagawa. And as high as 5 to 20%, yeah. so there would be no spontaneous bleeding. So that's the severity you can see it in your notes. So these are your DDA VP. Nasal spray and injection. So nasal spray pala. So we have this concentrate cry and precipitate, which will have increased uh, factor eight coagulation factors. So this one, one will brand this means. Um guys nilagay ko dito kasi I don't want to forget to tell you that in Henry. So, yung tanong ko, ang magka-tikit, di ba, in the circulation is factor 8 and von Willebrand factor. So, factor 8 and von Willebrand um, factor are attached to each other in the circulation. So, sabi ko, alam mo nakaka-affect po kaya? How do they affect each other when we, when we have von Willebrand disease or hemophilia? Apparently, according to Henry, guys, if you have von Willebrand disease, the secondary disease is hemophilia. So, kung may von Willebrand disease ka, pwede kang mag-result ng hemophilia A. And because they two are carried by one another. So, so ma'am, yung hemophilia A ba, pwede mag-result sa von Willebrand? Ay, hindi ko alam. 
kasi hindi ko na ba sa Henry. Um, I just want to say pala that yun, according to Henry as well, that in treating in treating hemophilia A, the factor A deficiency, there is complication that it can cause um, inhibitor, factor 8 inhibitor antibodies about 15 to 35%. I think that's really high. So if you will treat a person with factor 8 concentrate, there are 15 to 35% chance that they will form an inhibitor against factor 8. So, sad. So, yeah. uh, so, one of the parentheses is the number one, uh, most common inherited coagulopathy. And number two are hemophilia. So, hemophilia A. <laughs> okay. See. Okay. Next class. So, we have other coagulation disorders. So, ito, precalicrine, high molecular, high molecular, weight comedogen factor 12 deficiency. Um, if you remember, they are, anong group sila? Group o. So, contact group N. Actually, it's about 5 o'clock. So, habit ko yung araw. Dumidilim na. I think I should open my lights. Wait lang. So, here, um, if you remember, Diba, meron tayong the modern modern coagulation cascade. At ang mas acceptable na ngayon is the extrinsic pathway kung saan magsisimula sa tissue factor, not really factor 12. At kung mapapansin nyo, kung babalikan nyo yung nose nyo, there is no bleeding tendency when it comes to factor 12. There's no associated bleeding disorders when it comes to contact groups. So, ibig sabihin, hindi na sila ganung kahalaga na sila ganong kahalaga. Kasi nga, kahit mawala sila, hindi sila masyado mag-bleed. So, mas accepted na yung ngayon yung um, yung sabi ni Henry. So, this ones are autosomal recessive. But class, um, apparently, dito sa last na na Bullet dito, sabi niya, factor 12 deficiency is vulnerable to excessive clotting or thrombosis. So, it's not bleeding, ha, but formation of clots. Yan. Factor 12. So, the other name, if you remember, of factor 12 is Hageman. So, apparently, Hageman died due to pulmonary embolism. So, in the coming ano, slides, pag-usapan natin ng embolism, I just want has to be on the same page that embolism is the formation of embolus. What is embolus? It's almost the same with thrombus. So it's the formation of clot that blocks a blood vessel. So there's a formation of clot among the blood vessels. Pag sinabi natin um, embolus. Pero class, ang, ang embolus, hindi lang clot. Pwedeng fat globule, so aside from clot, fat globule, pwedeng gas lang, pwedeng foreign material. So when we see about embolism, it's not necessarily a clot. Pwedeng gas, pwedeng ano, ano. Pero pag thrombus, sure, clot yan. Okay. So meron tayong next page. Nasa page 20 na ako. Pareho tayo ng page or basta around that. So, nakatibal lang itong mga factor 2, factor 7, 10, 1, 5, and 13. Okay. So, ayoko na syempre kayong pahirap. But let's just add a little bit of notes. So, here, in factor 2 deficiency, according to Henry, that it is the rarest inherited coagulopathy. Alam nyo mong tinatanong sa board, rarest, most common, most severe, least, mga ganun. So, pinaka-rare ito, factor 2. So, pro-trombin, wala tayong problema dyan. Next, factor 7 and factor 10 deficiency. So, wala naman na akong side notes dyan. So, factor 7, syempre, it can be affected by vitamin K. So, 7, 9, 10. Factor 10 as well. Factor 1 deficiency. So, guys, I just want to add this one. So, factor 1 deficiency, di ba? We thought, here, it's about fibrinogen. So, fibrinogen is the most abundant 
factor in your circulation is about 200 to 400 milligrams per dl. Plus, basta may thrombin na at fibrin na dyan, pak! Tapos, sigurado, it will be converted to fibrin. Yan. Kaya nga, your coagulation factors, their main goal is to make thrombin. So that this thrombin can convert fibrinogen to fibrin, tama, tama. So if there is a fi uh, problem with your fibrinogen, hence there will be a problem the formation of fibrin, tama. Kahit ang rami namin mong thrombin, kung wala kang fibrinogen, you won't form a clot. So we have this three um, anomalies with regards to your fibrinogen. We have a fibrinogenemia and hypofibrinogenemia. So so here in this two, these two are quantitative disorders. So there's something wrong with the number of your fibrinogen. So I fibrinogen, so total absence siya, and decreased level naman sa hypofibrinogenemia at 75 to 100 milligrams per dl. At itong this fibrinogenemia, this is a qualitative dis effect the de defect so there's a dysfunction so guys um fibrinogen is actually formed in the liver so if there is there's something wrong with the gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid and gamma carboxylation of glutamic acid so it can affect the qualitative characteristic of your fibrinogen. So this happens in hepatitis B and C. So there's something wrong with how the carboxylation of your fibrinogen at nangyari to sa liver. So naapektuhan to kung may hepatitis B at C ka. It's like what I um, mentioned a while ago. So if there is umbilical cord stump bleeding rin, so, pwedeng it can also indic indicative of a fibrinogenemia. And guys, according to Henry, can you please write it down? Kasi nasa notes niya rin to, eh. That in a fibrinogenemia and hypofibrinogenemia, so factor 1 disorder, they are prone to miscarriages. Miscarriages. Actually, mabasa nyo yan. Sa table, sa notes nyo, yung clinical manifestation of coagulation factor deficiency. Kung hinanap nyo yung miscarriages, so factor 1 and 13. So, sabi ni Henry, yung maroon factor 1. Yan. We have factor 5 deficiency. We have, so, coagulopathy to our excess. Um, there is bleeding. So, we have Odin's disease or parahemophilia. So factor five is a autosomal recessive um, disease. So bleeding tawa. Among the balate may binanggit ka factor five laden. Yeah. So those factor five laden guy is a thrombotic disorder, excessive formation of blood. Yun. So ito factor five deficiency. Ibig sabihin nito. Um, there's a quantitative defect on factor 5. Yung factor 5 laden class, there's a qualitative. So, may, pagka, may dysfunction yung factor 5 sa factor 5 laden. Hindi siya na inactivate. Next, guys, we have factor 10, 13 deficiency. So, factor 13 deficiency is autosomal recessive. Diba? Plus, itong factor 13, it stabilizes your clot. It makes it more stable, it makes it um, a little more uh, resistant to, to being broken down. So, guys, di ba, kung alal yung Dukert's test natin or yung 5 molar urea solubility test. Yan. So, kung may factor 13 deficiency, your, uh, your clot easily dissolves. Yan. So, factor 13 assay can be detected through 5 molar urea clot solubility test or chromogenic assay. Let's acquired coagulation disorders. So, first off, we have lupus anticoagulant or anti-phospholipid antibody. So, mga kapatid, tinuturo niya kung saan nag a tong lupus anticoagulant. It's an anti-phospholipid. So, therefore, it attaches on the phospholipids of your proteins. 
or your platelets, di ba? Sila yung may phospholipids. So, lupus anticoagulant is found among SLE. Guys, inotice nyo yung nared ko dito. So, when there is lupus anticoagulant, there's no bleeding, but there is thrombosis, class. So, thrombotic disorder, mga kapatid, ang lupus anticoagulant, ha? So, ibig sabihin, kahit anticoagulant yung sinasabi niya, hindi siya anticoagulant. It forms clots. Ayan, ha? Okay? Okay? So, yan. So, found in SLVE, 20 to 80% of patients with HIV. Is it, I think, um, kaya one of the references says that people with HIV tends to have hypogamma globulinemia. So, mababa yung antibodies. So, hence, forms lupus anticoagulant, something like that. And we have factor 8C inhibitor. So, these are specific factor inhibitors. At ang pinaka-common ay factor 8. Most common and most severe factor inhibitor. Most common and most severe. Guys, ito sabi ni Henry, sabi niya, it's mostly found among elders, B-cell malignancy, connective tissue disorders, SLA, postpartum. So, after mga nak. So, what else? Yung sinabi ko sa akin na it's a complication. After a factor 8 Deficiency treatment, factor 8 treatment, it can be a complication. So treatment, so so if there's an inhibitor, just pump more factor 8. Ito, um, give concentrates of vitamin K dependent coagulation factors. Perhaps they increase the production of exogenous factor 8 and immunosuppressants. So, since inhibitors, so, mga antibodies to, so, you have, you have to stop them using immunosuppressants. Here, guys, factor K deficiency. I cannot emphasize enough how important vitamin K in the coagulation. So, vitamin K, guys, acts as a um, coenzyme. It's, it's the only vitamin... Um, lipid soluble vitamin which acts as a coenzyme. So, nagbabasa ba siya ako? I'll, and I'll link you the video. Marami ka natutunan about vitamin K. Ang vitamin K pala, pala, pala class, do we have three forms of vitamin K? K1, K2, and K3. Vitamin K1, guys, is found usually among plants, among green leafy vegetables. So, kumain ba kayo ng maraming sambipsal? So, sa sambipsal, ramihan niyo yung lettuce. Yan, green leafy vegetables. Pechay, ganyan. Ugot, isayote, mangan kayo. So, that's vitamin K1. And we have vitamin K2, which is found in meat. Um, and it is produced by your intestinal bacteria. So, in the body pala, there are sources. Alam nyo ba, I found out that it's rare. It's rare to have vitamin K deficiency because your own gut bacteria produces vitamin K. It's rare. So, ang pinaka-common na causes ng vitamin K deficiency is not from food intake but decreased absorption. So, example, sino bang may mga decreased absorption? Alcoholics. Why? Because there is obstruction. There's biliary obstruction class in their biliary duct, biliary obstruction, malabsorption syndrome. What else? Ayan, dalawa. So, among alcoholics, nagkakaroon ng vitamin K deficiency. Ayan, nagkaroon ako ng ideas case study, di ba? Next, Presence of vitamin K antagonist. So, ang pinakakama na vitamin K antagonist natin is warfarin. Warfarin, diba? Yun pa yun na-discuss ko. And meron ako na-discover after watching the video. We have decumarol. And scanning your nose, I've seen decumarol. So, decumarol has, uh, uh, acts also as a vitamin K antagonist. The same with your warfarin or cumodin, diba? Kapareho ng yun. In class, decrease normal flora in the gastrointestinal tract. So, people who are taking um, 
antibiotics for a very long time. So, meron hong sajanti class, meron siyang rheumatic heart disease. And ganun pala ang gamutan ng rheumatic heart disease. You have to drink penicillin for the next 3 to 5 years. Yan. Actually, may clean na daw yung 3 years. Eh. But up to 10 years. Yan. Di ba ang naalala nyo from immunocero is rheumatic heart disease can be a sequelae or complication of strep throat, uh, streptococcus. So, the streptococcus can at some point will produce your body will your streptococcus have M protein and this M protein is attacked by your antibodies. Apparently, my M protein is in the So, So, your antibodies can also attack your heart. So, which causes rheumatic heart disease. So, ayun, to reduce the bacterial growth, kailangan niya uminam ng penicillin for the next three years muna. So, ayun, she can be prone to vitamin K deficiency. So, dapat, kumain lang siya ng gulay and vitamin K supplement. What else? Ano ba mo sabi natin? So far, nasabi ko naman lahat ng notes ko. So, and sabi ko, can I, can I just link you the video about vitamin K? But vitamin K is very important in the gamma carboxylation of glutamic acids of your, con, of your vitamin K dependent. So, para ma-activate itong mga 2, 7, 9, 10, protein C and protein S, kailangan ng vitamin K. So, if there is vitamin K deficiency, they won't be activated. There will be just zymogens in your liver. So, unless kung wala ang gamma carboxylation, hindi sila ma-activate. And so, ganun kahalaga ang vitamin K. At ganun ka-importante that we are monitoring for vitamin K deficiency. And class, vitamin K, ang vitamin K pala ang pangalan niya, as in K in coagulation. Coagulation in German. So, population with a K, so Germany. Yeah. Next class, liver disease. So, just like what I mentioned, that so yung 2719, they are producing the liver. At with the vitamin K, they are, um, ang tawag kasi doon, post translational modification. Yun, or gamma carboxylation. Uh, na. So, yun ang ngyari sa liver. So, basically, all the factors are affected when there is liver disease. Kasi nga dun sa gamma carboxylation. But the most apparent, most profound impact is on factor 7. Kuna na factor 7 according to your notes. But, yan. Dapat pinilitan ko, sorry, itong slide na to. But, factor 7 is more profound. Pero di ba, ang factor 7, mababa rin siya if there is vitamin K deficiency. Hence, factor 5 daw. Factor 5 is more specific in assessing for liver disease. Pero liver disease na lang, ALT na lang. Diba? ALT, GGT, GGT2. Next class, massive transfusion. So in cases wherein a person requires so much um, amount of blood, more than 1.5 liters of blood to be replaced. So, it tends to dilute or um, your coagulation factor and arrests hemostasis. Tinitigil niya hemostasis na dilute ba naman? Especially class, nangyayari ito pag if there is no plasma that is given to the patient, if the patient is only given saline first yun, pag saline lang. It, class, normal saline Pag ang yung isang tao, like kung sa akin, Sir June, that he had a patient who was Jehovah's Witnesses and they, they weren't allowing that the patient will be transfused with human blood kasi um, it's, it's um, they don't believe. They don't believe that they can trans, that on blood transfusion. So, ayon Ang, ang bilang nurse, so hindi niya pwede mapilitin na transfusion ng dugo kahit namamatay na yung pregnant woman, pregnant woman pala yun. So, normal sa line lang yung ini-introduce niya para bumalik yung blood volume ng woman or yung mother. So, apparently, ayaw ng 
nung relatives, ay namatay yung mother. So, here. So, pag red packed, packed, red blood cells lang yung binibigay. And there can be the illusion of air coagulation factors. So, here. Ito na yung isa mga favorite na ko is disseminated intravascular coagulation, consumption, coagulopathy, ang haba naman. So, in disseminated intravascular coagulation, so, or consumption coagulopathy. So, there is excessive consumption. Ibig sabihin, guys, naubos. Naubos ang mga coagulation factors natin. Aside from coagulation factors, yung mga inhibitors. Diba? Pag sa normal na coagulation, ubos ang factor 5 and factor 8. So, ito yung mga factor 5 and factor 8. Tama. So, ito yung mga co-factors natin na coagulation factors. So, mas lalo na, ma'am, bakit na co consumption coagulopathy? Because there is excess formation of thrombin and plasmin. So, excess yung pagbubuo ng clot, excess yung pagbe-breakdown ng clot. There is excessive coagulation and excessive fibrinolysis. Yan. Simultation, sabi dito sa PowerPoint, simultaneous and either may dominate. Yan. So, there is excess formation of clots and excess formation of plasmin, the one which lyses your um, fat. So, it will be apparent that in the IC, so, nauubos na lahat. So, naging deficient na lahat. So, expect prolonged PT, prolonged APTT, and thrombocytopenia. Yan. So, ex expect a prolonged PT, prolonged PTT, and thrombocytopenia. Yan, dito ba yan? Yan. So, there is consumption. So, there can be bleeding, lack of blood flow, RBC fragmentation. Pwede pakisearch. Ano yung ano, red blood cell um, shape na, which results to fragmentation, which is common in the IC. Pwede pakisearch. And increase FDP and D-dimer. Um, guys, when a patient is positive with D-dimer, it can point out to DIC. But the onset of D-dimer, yung kung saan siya tataas ang D-dimer, is after 4 hours of the onset of DIC. Yeah. So, kung malala niyo, parang AST, ALT, NCK, meron siyang onset, may, at may time na it will rise, may time na it will peak to mga enzymes na to. The same thing with D-dimer. Its onset is after 4 hours. Magpapositive siya after 4 hours. Next, guys. Pakasulat nga. Your fibrin gen will decrease after after 4 to 24 hours. So, hindi agad-agad na nagdi-decrease ang ating mga fibrin gen factor mod. So, it can, you should have to wait after 4 to 24 hours. So, we should be constantly assessing. So, fibrin gen, pwede tayong mag-test using thrombin test. Yun ang nakalimutan ko sabihin. Yan. So, thrombin test and reptilis time. This up, I've been already doing the back. Thrombin test, reptilis time. Dito naman, sa DIC. So, we will test for APTT, PT, platelet count, D-dimer. Pero, D-dimer, it will peak after 4 hours. Fibrinogen, it will decrease after 4 to 24 hours. And platelet, after 48 hours. So, after 2 days pa, nag-decrease ang platelet. So, yun. Constant monitoring dapat. <laughs> so, a complication of, sepsi of the IC is septis. Yeah. Image. So, sabi niya, lab findings, all coagulation tests are abnormal. Plasma and platelet transfusion daw. Class, can I just, can you take this down? Remote ako yung ilagay sa PowerPoint. So, so you're, according to Henry to, guys, Henry na lang muna ang binabasa ko ngayon kasi isa-isa lang. So, it is, it's usually a complication of sepsis. So, pag may sepsis ka, it can, the sequelae, the complication is DIC. So, class, let me just emphasize that DIC is a complication. So, it's not hereditary, it's not congenital. Yeah. It's a complication. Um, 
It is also found in malignancy, obstetric complication, massive tissue injury, in surgery, class, tissue destruction. Mang, ba't ganun? Bakit may... Ba't ganun? It's a complication. Um, DIC, one thing that um, increases the risk of DIC if there is the um, release of a thromboplastin. Di ba saan nang ahanap ang thromboplastin? Usually, marami yan sa placenta, sa may uterus, sa may brain. Maram, meron rin tayo sa mga circulatory system. So guys, pag nagsa-surgery tayo or there's tissue cell destruction, it can um, release this thromboplastin material, thromboplastic. Yan, thromboplastic materials, thromboplastin para our tissue factor. So, pwede tayong mag-release nito in tissue destruction, in malignancy, ganyan. Tapos, it will increase the chance of having DIC. So, can I just reiterate the blood picture? So, all coagulation, co coagulation tests are abnormal. Pero bilang Pilipino, hindi naman natin ma lahat magagawa yun. So, yun. Pag-increase na ang PT, APTT, decrease fibrinogen, decrease platelet, or thrombocytopenia. Diba? The confirmatory test for DIC is D-dimer test. So, D-dimer can be done through immunonephalometric assay. Um, nephalometric assay, di ba? Parang nephalometric, di ba? Light scattering. So, immuno. So, there's the relation of antigen antibodies and it's red. And we read it by the light scattered. So, immunonephalometric assay and latex agglutination assay. So, disorders of fibrinolysis. Guys, this is short. record pa ba ako? Okay, nag-record pa. Nabaan ako, kaya ko sinabi. And disorders of fibrinolysis. So, we have primary fibrinolysis, di ba? So, yung fibrinogenolysis. So, when your plasminogen converts to plasmin, it will act upon your fibrinogen. So, yun, magpo-produce ng fibrin split products. Tapos, class, yung secondary fibrinolysis. So, blood dissolution results to increase FSDP and FDP that interfere with coagulation and platelet function. I think, um, ang pinakamasabi ko dito sa disorders of fibrinolysis is um, the deficiency of alpha-2 antiplasmid. Yun yung, yun yung minimension ni Henry. The deficiency of alpha-2 and antiplasmid is the most common one. So, antiplasmid, may walang siya na it's a protein, alpha. Alpha 2 antiplasmin, it's a protein which prevent lysis. So, kung may deficiency ka ng alpha 2 antiplasmin, no one, no substance will prevent um, lysis. So, yun, alpha 2 plasmin lysis. Plas alpha 2 antiplasmin deficiency can affect your fibrinolysis as well. So, yun, we test for euglobin Euglobin time. So if it, the normal value of euglobin time is two to four hours. So if your clot dissolves after less than two hours, yeah, there's something wrong with fibrinolysis. <clears throat> so we can differentiate the two using euglobin clot lysis time. So pag primary fibrinolysis, euglobin clot lysis is positive. And secondary is not, it's negative. Yeah. I think there is, we discussed ko rin yung protam and sulfate. Okay. Thrombosis. Dito na tayo sa page 21. Anyway, 